Uh, so next up, we have Andreas In, the co-founder and CTO of Wrap, a mobile gift card service. And before founding Wrap, he was the CTO and, um, of Spotify. So we already love him very much for that. So please welcome Andreas up on stage. Thank you. Wow, a lot of people here. Can you all hear me all right? Good. Um, so obviously I want to tell you about RAP, my latest venture, but I thought I would also take the opportunity to talk a little bit about um, what's different from starting a tech company back in 2006 when Spotify was started and 2011 uh, when we started RAP. So just a quick background on myself. I have a computer science background, went to the Royal Institute of Technology, KDH in Stockholm. Um, spent a little time in business school. The first real startup that I worked for was Startle. Um, how, many, how many know what Startle is? A few. Um, you're not exactly in the target demographic. It's, it's kind of a dress-up game, online paper dolls, um, targeted to girls aged 7 to 12, roughly. But it's, it has an interesting um, founding story. It was actually started in a previous incarnation under a different name, Paper Doll Heaven, back in 2004, um, by a Finn named Lisa Rang, who was a retired housekeeper, and she'd never done anything online before, but she wanted to provide an alternative to kind of shoot them up games and violence for, um, for girls online. So she, um, with some help from some friends of her son, she uh, bought Macromedia Flash and just started drawing these dolls and putting them up on her personal website on GeoCities. Um, and it just took off, just started growing until um, she was thrown out of GeoCities and had, um, had to get hosting in a real domain. And then um, in 2005, 2006, Index Ventures and Sequoia Capital invested in the company, um, more or less buying her out, and brought in a new CEO, Matthias Miksha, who set up the company under a completely new incarnation in Stockholm. Um, and then it's just been growing. It's got like a billion page views uh, monthly today. Uh, my biggest takeaway from Startle, though, was that I uh, worked together with and got to know Daniel Ek, who was going to start Spotify. So we started talking about that in, during the spring of 06. Um, and I. I came along, uh, joined Spotify as its first employee, its CTO for the first three and a half years, so built the original tech team and most of the platform and ran product for those years um, until about three years ago in November 2009 when I felt it was time to do something different. The company was 150, 160 people at that time, um, already quite big, uh, and I felt my kind of product visions for Spotify were no longer that closely aligned with the future of the company, so I left, spent about uh, two years working um, for a bunch of different organizations and companies, um, helping uh, mostly venture capital and private equity firms and a bunch of startups, um, and got to know a lot of people, learned a lot until uh, about a year and a half ago when, um, oh, well, let's, let's skip forward from this, together with uh, Yelmar Vinblad and some other people, we started um, RAP. How many have tested RAP? Well, if you, if, you want to, uh, just, if you want to get a gift from us, just um, tweet anything with hashtag wrapme, and we'll send you a gift right away, and you can check it out. Or you can just um, download the app from the App Store or um, from Google Play, or you can just go to wrap.com and check it out. It's a social gifting service. Um, so like many things, it's sort of a two-sided marketplace. It has um, one side that is user-facing. Um, so for our users, it's um, a social gifting service that sits on top of your social network on Facebook. Uh, it's a mobile application. It's a very simple way for you to give gifts to your friends. Um, it might be because you get a birthday reminder or because there's a holiday coming up or something, but it could also be just for any reason, like saying thanks for dinner yesterday or like thanks for getting a drive home, whatever. Um, it's really simple. You just pick a friend. Um, you pick what gift you want to give them. And this is facilitated through digital gift cards. So in a sense, Wrap is also a wallet service that kind of solves the end-to-end -end problem of sending the gift, receiving the gift, and then ultimately um, redeeming the gift when you're in store. The funny thing is, the twist, uh, and what makes this interesting is, if you try it out, you'll see that a lot of these gifts are for free. 
So they will be lower denominations, typically 5 to 10 euros. Some are bigger, maybe 20 euros, but they're available for free. So without paying anything, you can send um, your friend a small but still real gift. Uh, and the reason why this is possible is, of course, that these gifts are sponsored by our retail partners. So we have about 150 brands worldwide. We're, long, we're live in eight markets um, that want to attract more people into their stores. Uh, so we, we're an online to offline marketing platform for them, uh, which is performance-based. So we charge our fees when they get a customer into their store. And for that, they're willing to um, sponsor that customer with a free gift card. So these are without restrictions, it's not a coupon, it's something you can just buy for the amount if you want to, but of course they're betting that on average you will spend more when you come into the store. So as I said, um, RAP was founded in May 2011, so it's about a year and a half old, and we built most of the product um, over the summer. And I'll get back to that because it's like, it's really gotten a lot faster from start of the company until you have a product that you can launch, uh, even if you're not just doing an MVP, even if you're launching like a full-fledged product. Um, it's much faster than it was five years ago. Uh, we did a trial launch in September last year, and then we launched properly in still Sweden only in November 2011. Uh, we raised our Series A from Atomico and Greylock, two venture firms based in London and Silicon Valley respectively. Um, and then in February 2012, just three months after our proper launch, we got cloned by uh, the German Summer Brothers and uh, since then by another 15, 20 companies worldwide that are doing essentially the same thing, just under different names um, and sometimes uh, under very similar graphics and logos. Um, but we've been able to beat them back quite well. None of the other um, services really have any traction to speak of. Uh, but it was uh, quite a battle during the spring. We um, ramped up our global expansion much more rapidly than we had originally planned, uh, and we launched in seven more markets um, during a few months. So that includes, besides Sweden, Norway and Finland, UK and Germany, Netherlands, most importantly US and also Australia. So again, if you want to try it out, tweet with hashtag wrapme, you'll get a gift today. So. Many companies are started um, with a specific product in mind, right? The founder or the founding team have a vision for a product that they want, and they start building it. They have an itch that they want to scratch, essentially. Um, same thing as for many open source projects, really. You want to solve a problem more or less for yourself. Other startups are um, started because you see kind of a market opportunity. You see a niche that's not filled by anyone else. And Rap's founding story is more on those lines. We, um, as did many others, of course, saw that there were a number of trends that were like really overarching everything that was happening with online businesses, um, and they were converging to a point where we think that a service like Rap could make sense. So everything was social, um, all the services were moving to mobile phones and getting more local, and um, retailers, um, still make 90% of their business offline, even though everyone talks about e-commerce. And during the last 10, 15 years, almost all marketing innovation has been targeted towards e-commerce. It's all, it's all for online um, and offline. Bricks and mortar retailers have a hard problem fighting off the benefits of like broader catalogs, cheaper prices, uh, more choice that you get online. Um, so they're in desperate need for online to offline marketing strategies. And we think this is the niche that we can fill with RAP. Um, and if you look at kind of what, what happened during those five years between 06 and 2011, there's a lot. And it's all centered around new and better and much more pervasive platforms. So I'd say there are three main things. The first thing is cloud computing. Now it's kind of an everyday thing. Everyone talks about it. We take it for granted. Back in 2006, Amazon Web Services had launched. Um, of course, we looked at it when, uh, when starting Spotify, but it was still too immature to be suitable for a service like Spotify, at least. Um, today, it's the default. Or if you're not going to be on Amazon, you might be on Rackspace or Heroku or any, of, any other cloud service. But going out there and finding a data center and buying servers, it's, um, 
it's not what most people do anymore, and it was the default back in 2006. It's pretty much what you had to do. Um, the second thing is uh, the mobile platforms, of course. I mean, smartphones have existed for more than 10 years, but in 2006, when Spotify was started, it was before the first iPhone. Um, people did have smartphones, but hardly anyone used it for anything beyond just calling, possibly managing their calendar. Um, they did have a web browser that few people used. Hardly anyone installed apps. I mean, they existed, but hardly anyone used them. Um, the iPhone made that ubiquitous, um, and Android followed up. And then, of course, the, the social network platforms, primarily Facebook. So um, on the left side, you see the first proper installation of Spotify in a real data center. The first version of Spotify was actually running out of a a uh, closet in the first office. Um, and during the summer of 2006, we had to go out and buy like an external air conditioner and put up in the window just to keep the servers cool. Um, but this is the first data center that Spotify set up a proper installation in, um, in London, in Docklands. Um, and we spent weeks, literally weeks, um, looking at data centers, negotiating with uh, IP transit providers, um, negotiating with hardware vendors, um, just figuring out configurations, installing everything. Um, and it was a constant process. And you couldn't kind of expand fluidly when you needed more capacity. You had to figure out, like, OK, um, in three months, we need more availability in our data center. So we need to negotiate for more racks right now. And can we get those racks next to the existing racks? Or will they be like on a second floor or something? So we need to. Um, have a fiber connection between them. It was a lot of practical stuff that we just don't have to deal with anymore. Um, on the right side, you see a Mac Mini, and this is all the hardware except for laptops um, that Rap owns. We don't have a single server of our own. There's no need to have one. It's all on Amazon and Heroku, which is also on Amazon. Of course, um, this is sort of stating the obvious, but I think it's worth just taking um, the time to think back that these smartphone platforms that probably 70, 80 percent of all the startups that are started these days have at the center of their um, idea, of their business, didn't even exist five years ago or six years ago. Um, well, mobile first was, um, was first said by, by Eric Schmidt, who is then CEO of Google, but you know, even Google is still kind of battling with uh, the transition to mobile. mobile. Facebook is battling with it. Um, where startups getting started now are really mobile first. Rap didn't even have a web version of the service until a few months in. And of course, Facebook is a platform. It's unprecedented that any service has um, collected a billion users right there. Um, it, you know, any developer will kind of say, it. well, it's really sucky. But if you just um, look at it um, from the perspective of what it gives you access to, it has a great API. And the user acceptance is, is phenomenal. Everyone uses it almost every day, right? So it's like really easy to get distribution for your app on a scale that just wasn't possible before. Um, now, of course, as I said, everything is, this is a little bit obvious. Like We take it for granted. But just the fact that we take it for granted is kind of a, um, a reflection of how fast these things progress. And um, it's an interesting, well, Let's get back to that. It's an interesting exercise to kind of first think back like another five years, I think. That puts us in 2001, right? This was like before, it was at the end of the first IT boom. But even if we, even if we don't think so much about the sort of financial landscape of the time, um, even like technically and um, in terms of what was available and for platforms to build your company on, um, was a whole different word again. We didn't have Web 2.0. We didn't have any social networks to speak of. Services didn't have API. Services were rarely connected to each other. If they were, it was the result of lengthy business negotiations inside of boardrooms, not just of a developer kind of picking up the documentation of an open, I, open API and connecting services. Now, with this in mind, like 2001, 2006, 2011, like if we fast forward another five years or so, um, that's when it gets interesting because we'll have like as big shifts, I believe, from where we are now. And I, you know, I'm, I, I can't uh, even start to try to make a bet on what those will be. Um, I mean, there are general trends which we can kind of extend. But the interesting thing is we'll have so many things 
which will fundamentally affect the sort of companies we'll be able to start in five years that we will again all take for granted. So on that note, um, this is something that hasn't changed. It's a great time to start companies. Five years from now will be an even better time to start companies, but it, it'll always be a great time to start companies and it's kind of, you should just um, go out and do it. Another thing that hasn't changed is that um, startups will always be kind of a roller coaster. Um, you'll have great weeks, you'll have bad weeks, uh, but it's a hell of a lot of fun in the end. Thank you.